Welcome to part five of the order management series. In this video, we will integrate our order management system from SmartSuite with NoLoco. NoLoco allows us to build portals and interfaces both for internal and external use. And in this video specifically, we're going to build an internal sales order interface. Check it out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business process and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, you can visit our, our website, innerdevsolutions.com, or you can click the link in the description below to book a free consult. Continuing with the order management system that we've been using in the previous parts to the series, we have our sales orders and sales order items tables, and these are the specific two tables that we are going to work with in NoLoco. If you do not have an account with NoLoco, there's a link in the description below to get started and to sign up. Within no, no Loco, you're going to go in, create a new app. And because we're using SmartSuite, we are going to use the SmartSuite integration here. So we can go ahead, select it, and we can change the name to our app. And I'll just do something like demo order system. We can click next. The app will start to build for us. I'm already connected with SmartSuite. If you have a new account, you will have to go ahead and do that. It will walk you through it. It's very simple. You just have to add your API key. And from there, we can go in and choose our workspace. So my workspace is demos. And then from here, I can go in and select the solution that I want to use, which is order management system. Now we can specify a name. I've got order management system and we can call this demo and select next. And now it's going to connect to SmartSuite. It's going to find all the tables that exist within that solution. And within a few minutes here, it's also going to create a couple of interfaces for us based on the tables and the data that it's found. It's going to use AI to try to interpret and take a guess at what we want to see. Usually this is good enough to get us started and give us some ideas. But for the most part, we will want to build a lot of custom interfaces that work for our specific needs. So our no logo app has been generated. It has brought in a number of the tables that corresponds, as you can see, sales order, sales order items, inventory, and so on that correspond to the tables that exist within our order management system. Again, we're going to focus on the sales order and sales order items. As you can see, the sales order, it's brought in a timeline layout, which isn't really accurate for what we need here. There's a number of different options that you could use here. Table could be a decent option. Rows could work. We could probably even use the cards or grid would work as well. I'm just going to use the, maybe the rows layout here. There's a few options that we're going to want to turn on. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to the fields. There's some information here that we don't probably need to see, such as the link to the sales order items. So those are essentially our line items to this order. We don't need to see this from the sales order view. Once we click into the actual order, that's where we'll want to see some of that information. Maybe we do want to see the sales order ID, things like quote date, order date. Those may or may not be relevant to you at this information level. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off the sales order items. We can leave total cost. There's fine order status. That's absolutely something that we'd want to see. And I'm going to move that up. We've got the sales order ID, order status, customer name, all of that information would be relevant. If you want, you could leave customer email there. I'm going to turn it off to make it a little bit cleaner. So we've got quote date, order date, and due date. I'll leave all of those there for the time being as well. So that's good enough to get started within this fields option here. There's a few things I want to do the sales order ID. I'm going to click this little edit button and I'm going to do 33% of the view here. So I want to split it up. That's going to look after 33% and the order status and customer name is something else I want to display as well. I accidentally toggled that off. I'm going to bring that back up to the top here. Now that we have this interface set up the way we want, sales order ID, customer name, and order status, there's a few other additional changes we can make. If I go into the order status, it might be helpful to be able to make an edit in line here. That way we don't have to click into the actual order to make a change of the order status. We can just filter through and scroll through all of our orders. 
and be able to click into it and change the status of the order. That might be helpful to have here. A couple of other things as well. I've noticed there's the time that's being displayed here. If we go into data, our sales order, single click the format, I just want to display the date. I don't need the date and time. And we can do that for each of our date fields here. So I can click into this one, go date. And our due date field, we can't actually change that because it's a due date field within Smart Suite. It's a little bit different than just our standard date field. So I'll go back to the app here. You can see now that it has removed the time from the dates. And there's a little bit of conditional logic that I want to toss in as well. The quote date, that's fine to be displayed as long as it's in the quote status. But maybe once it's moved on from there, they've placed the order, it might not be as relevant to us. So we could hide that conditionally. From quote date, we'll go over to here, click the little edit button. And we only want to show this when certain conditions are met. And the data we want to select is within the sales order. So we can select that. We'll go to status. We only want to show this when the sales order status is equal to quote. If I go to this order status here, we can see the quote date. I'll flip this to ordered and we can see that the quote date disappeared dynamically based on this order status. You could do that for each of your date fields or any other field element that you would like to display based on some sort of status. Next thing that I want to do here, we're going to go into options, go down to this search box and I will toggle that on. And this will allow us to search the orders by really whatever we want. I can type in John Smith or type in John and that will show up for us. That will allow us to easily and quickly get to any order that we need. We can also add in filters. For example, if we want to filter by order status, we can have that set up. I can go in and select, I want to see all our quotes. I see all our ordered or in process or delivered. We have that flexibility as well. And then within the search functionality right here, we have the search by field name. If we only want to allow this search function to look at maybe customer name and customer email, we have the option and flexibility to search for a specific customer name or customer email, or we can search across all of the fields as well. By default, this button exists and it automatically created a form here for us. So this will allow us to create a sales order and it will add it and populate it in here and also within our sales order tables. So I'm going to set that up quickly. I'm going to click on to the create a sales order. So this is the form, the sales order ID. We can hide that's automatically created within SmartSuite and we've got customer name. We want to be able to enter that customer email, quote date, order date. That's all fine. Due date, we can leave that in there and order status is fine as well. The link to sales order items, we can toggle that off as we will add that in a different interface. That's our sales order form set up. And from there, we can move into the sales order items. I'm going to click on a sales order. And when I click into a specific order here, this has already been pre-built for us. And it's actually looking pretty good. It shows us our order status across the top here. We've got our quote date and order date. AI actually did a pretty good job of setting things up and organizing the views in a useful uh, interface here. You can go in and change this however you want, but I'm going to leave it as it is because I'm really only focused on this link to sales order items and I'm going to select it and go back to general and I'm going to go down here and I'm just going to call this items. This way it's a little bit clearer for us. There's also the button and I can change the name of that in options, go down to button text and I'm just going to label this new item. Similar to our sales order, we can go over to fields and just display the information that we actually want to see. I can toggle this one off and we're going to toggle off the items ID. I do want to see which product it is, the quantity, the unit price and the total. And that should be good enough for now. Within the line items collection, a couple things that might be helpful. We can select this link to inventory products. So this is our product that we're actually choosing within the line item. We can go and edit that and we can toggle on this enable editing in line. 
and that will allow us to change the product or item right in line here. And I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go down to the quantity and I'm also gonna to toggle on enable editing in line here as well. So now we can select it and change this to six chairs, for example. And within a few moments, you will see this gets updated here. And again, similar to the sales order, there is a form that gets pre-built for us based on the collection. If I click new item, it will take us to the item. This is basically the line item form and it automatically adds in the link here for us. I can toggle off the sales order items and I'm going to leave the link to inventory products and quantity here. We can change the name of this to add new item. If I want to add a bar maybe and the quantity is going to be one, I can click save and it will flip back to our sales order and go into the sales order interface for us where we can see all of our line items associated to the order and we can see that the total cost increased accordingly. One last thing that we may want to do here is to be able to delete a record that we've added mistakenly or that the customer maybe no longer wants to purchase from within this line items tab or collection we can select it go to options down to record buttons we can add in a new action we'll click this edit button here and we can label this the delete button we can change the appearance to red or danger we can change the icon if we want i'm just going to leave it as is type modal or one click if we leave it as one click and you accidentally select the delete button, it will just disappear. So I'm gonna leave it as modal and the title can just be confirmation and then description, maybe something like, are you sure you want to delete this bracket? We can toggle this on that shows a notification and we can just do something like deleted and we can add an action here. So what should happen? We want to delete a record and it will just be this record. We can hit done, close out of that. And if I hover here, we can see that the delete button has been added, but we have to exit the build mode to use it. I can click done here. Now the bar, I wanna delete this. I'm gonna click delete. It's added in our information that we entered and I'm gonna click confirm. Within a moment here, we will see that the record has actually been deleted. And there was a little flag in the top right corner saying deleted. And when I flip back to Smart Suite, we can see that record's actually been deleted as well. And when we change the quantity to six chairs, it updated to six chairs within Smart Suite. From Smart Suite, if I change that quantity to four, within a few minutes, it will update in No Loco for us as well. And actually, it only took a few seconds in this case and updated the quantity to four. That's it for part five of the order management series. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified when part six is released.